Yeah, uh, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity. Um, I was invited to give this talk yesterday afternoon. And um, I need to make one important disclaimer right away. Um, I am not really known for my work on dark matter. Um, but I was an integral part of the dark energy survey analysis um, that was recently published. And this is the most important paper to look at. And you can see all the other papers here as well. And as is convincingly demonstrated by this pie chart that is unlabeled, dark matter is an important <laughs> aspect of the universe and hence needs to be taken into account uh, when doing such an analysis. Um, so consequently, uh, this talk is going to be uh, divided into two parts. I will give a very quick overview of these um, cosmology results and then I will mention a couple of dark matter projects and ideas that I hope resonate in this community. Um, very quickly, the Dark Energy Survey collaboration where 400 scientists, US support comes mainly from DOE and NSF. We have international collaborators from Spain, Brazil, Chile, um, from Australia, um, from Germany and from the UK. But um, Fermilab is the lead institution in this effort. Um, this is a picture of our recent collaboration meeting. It's not exactly 400 members, some sit at home. Lots of them are already exhausted from the analysis and need to sit down. Um, <laughs> this is the um, field of view of DECAM. So you can see it is, a, it is a 570 million pixel camera, three square degree field of view. Two of our CCDs unfortunately have given up by now, but we're not replacing them. We're not opening the viewer because all the others work really b beautifully. This, um, t uh, this camera is installed on the Blanco um, uh, in Chile. Um, so the four meter telescope there. The probes that are used to constrain cosmology from the Dark Energy Survey are galaxy clusters, weak lensing, galaxy clustering, supernovae. We have a strong lensing component and we're looking into cross correlations of galaxies uh, with CMB lensing and also weak lensing with CMB lensing. So there is a, a South Pole telescope component um, with which we overlap. Um, this talk is going to be mainly on the combination of weak lensing and galaxy clustering and the cross correlation thereof, which is called galaxy galaxy lensing. So that is our multi probe analysis with which we can constrain cosmology. And these are some forecasts of how much better DES is going to be doing after its five year analysis compared to the current state of the art. Um, so far, we only have our year one data sitting on disk. The survey progress. So we had science verification phase 150 square degrees. Um, Science is done, catalogs are public, you can look at them. Um, the year one analysis that I'll be talking about covers uh, roughly uh, uh, 10 times as much area, but is not quite as deep as the science verification data. Um, the data has been processed, the cosmological results are out, and um, we are already working on our year three data set, which is already sitting on disk. And we are currently vetting the catalogs and then we'll proceed to the cosmology analysis. Uh, year five of observations is currently ongoing and we will work on that um, an analysis um, uh, well next year hopefully. And here you can see the footprint of the of the overall survey. The year one footprint is mostly this area in red. Um, this is the science verification area over here. We overlap with the South Pole telescope which is there. We overlap with EBOS and with um, SDSS Stripe 82. And this footprint was designed otherwise to maximize the number of galaxy pairs that are used in the analysis because that's important for us. We're, uh, we're looking into two point statistics. Um, this is the first link to, to the dark matter community. So this is a mass map of the DES year one footprint. Um, it was derived by the weak lensing catalog, 26 million source galaxies that we divided into four redshift bins. And you can see here under densities in blue, over densities in red, this is a um, E mode kappa map between redshift of 0.2 and 1.3. And then you can overlay this with the, um, um, with the uh, galaxy density map. So um, in, in this case, we're looking at a clustering sample that is called uh, red magic, so red sequence galaxies. Um, 660,000 um, of those, so much smaller sample than the weak lensing sample, but we have excellent photo Zs for them. And we did a trade study. Um, going to a, a denser sample with less excellent photo Zs and we found that this is actually quite a sweet, sweet spot to look at. Um, and then, so we have the weak lensing component, we have the galaxy clustering component and we're also looking at the cross correlations of galaxy galaxy lensing where we use these galaxies as foreground lenses and um, the source galaxies as background sources. So we correlate position of foreground galaxies with the shape of background galaxies. Um, right. 
So this is a quick outline of that. We have uh, three cosmological probes that we're combining in our analysis. Angular clustering, 660,000 red luminous galaxies. Cosmic shear, weak lensing. Cosmic shear was already mentioned in the previous talk. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, which is a shear-shear correlation function from the 26 million galaxies. And then we have this cross-correlation of galaxy foreground position and source shear. And um, then we do our multi-probe analysis and the results can be found in this alphabetical paper. Very quickly, when it comes to the methodology, so we're interested in constraining the likelihood of the data given a certain um, point in parameter space and we have to take care of all of these problems. So we have to have a, a forward modeling machinery that can model our um, summary statistics as a function of cosmology and as a function of the relevant systematics that we include. We need to be able to get errors for these um, uh, summary statistics from covariance matrix and we have to have um, tools to accurately and, and efficiently sample the parameter space that is actually quite high dimensional in this case. Um, so this is all described in the methods paper and if you have the uh, power to insert your um, dark uh, matter model into such a forward modeling machinery, then we can replace this and run an analysis with this data set. <coughs> this, is, um, this is the first um, result that I would like to show, so it shows, shows internal consistency when you look at the weak lensing constraints only, when you look at the uh, cons combined constraints from clustering and galaxy-galaxy lensing, and then when you combine all of these three different probes you can see the increase in constraining power. And this is an analysis that where we marginalize over four uh, different cosmological parameters and a large set of nuisance parameters. And this has actually not been done in previous cosmology analysis. This is one of the largest parameter spaces uh, considered for, um, let's, uh, for low redshift imaging cosmological analyses. We find that these probes are consistent. We use the Bayes factor to determine consistency. Um, metric that can be debated and so um, well we we are allowed to combine these these uh, all, all of these three probes and then finally get the uh, blue constraints this is in the context of lambda CDM and is S8 is S8 than sigma yeah S8 is a scaled version of sigma 8 so the problem when showing sigma 8 versus omega matter is that you have this large degeneracy and S8 is a combination of sigma 8 and omega matter that then break that then causes contours to be less degenerate. For those interested in, in astrophysics, um, so intrinsic alignment of galaxies is one of the systematics that we have to take care of. It's in the nuisance parameter budget. And we do find um, uh, a hint for uh, an intrinsic alignment signal of these red luminous galaxies. Uh, uh, so this is the intrinsic alignment amplitude. Here we show um, constraining power, um, DES, three cross two points. So this is our multi-probe analysis versus Planck. We see that there is a slight tension in the central values. It's larger than one sigma. It's nothing really to write home about. Um, this tension has been seen before, for example, in the KIT survey. Um, but yeah, um, the, the, the most important point here is really that we have now, as a low redshift survey, reached the same constraining power as Planck has. Whereas I have to mention, this is Planck including a free neutrino mass. So we reran the Planck analysis, leaving neutrinos free. If you fix neutrinos, say at the um, at the lowest limit, um, then the Planck constraints are still tighter than what we have. But again, we have four, four years more data to come. Um, so at this point, we do claim that DES three cross two point is very much consistent with Planck and Lambda CDM. If you extend the parameter space to include W, so to include time-dependent dark energy, um, we find that the, the model um, WCDM versus lambda CDM is not strongly preferred. It's, it's okay to, to extend the parameter space by this one parameter. It is not, not really uh, an improvement for the model, though. We again find consistency amongst the probes and we're allowed to combine them. More interestingly, um, this is the uh, WCDM case and comparison with, with Planck. So we show the DES year one um, results in, in blue and the um, Planck without lensing results in black. Um, and uh, no, this is the uh, Planck no lensing results in green. And then when you combine 
DS year one with Planck no lensing, you actually do find quite a significant uh, detection of W uh, being different from minus one, but this is strongly disfavored as a, as a, um, as a model. So basically these two data sets, DES year one and Planck no lensing do not agree sufficiently to be combined. So this combination is actually not allowed. Um, we nevertheless created this plot because somebody else would have done so otherwise. <laughs> um, uh, if you combine um, DS year one with Planck BAO and uh, joint light curve analysis, so a supernova data set, you end up at W being minus 1.00. Um, uh, but again, there is going to be an increase in accuracy here that's quite substantial coming from the additional data, four years of data that is rushing in, and coming from the improved methodology of the multiprobe analysis. Yeah, I did not have, uh, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. I did not have uh, the time to go into detail. So we actually did not change, um, uh, we did not tweak anything in the data at all after we unblinded. So we had several steps of blinding. Our shear catalogs were blinded. We were not allowed to, um, um, to look at the signal. There, were, there was actually a quite a long list that explained the blinding. Um, and after we unblinded, uh, which was pretty stressful, uh, we did find that we don't have to go back and confess in the paper then that we failed. Um, I can encourage everybody to blind uh, their analysis. It does put a, a lot of pressure on the, on the collaboration and they will all work better. Um, so uh, for the future of DES, so as I mentioned, the year three analysis is ongoing. Um, we will increase the uh, 1,300 square degree data set to 5,000 square degrees, so cover the whole footprint we will have a slight increase in depth. Um, we will include galaxy clusters and supernova information and we um, are quite confident that especially this one is going to give us a big boost. Um, we will also include SPT information, so CMB lensing will be properly included in the multiprobe analysis. We also have um, um, MOUs with ACT and EBOS, so spectroscopic data sets and a different um, CMB data set where we can further extend um, our multi-probe analysis and yeah, if you have ideas to test dark matter scenarios, it is quite easy to get external collaborator status. So if any of the following ideas appeal to you, please do let me know. Um, first idea I wanted to pitch is um, extending uh, an analysis on galaxy galaxy lensing that is one of the, of the essential papers that was submitted together with the key paper um, and that is looking at galaxy bias of the um, clustering sample that, that uh, we chose, so the Red Magic clustering sample, and you can study galaxy bias as a function of redshift here with two different methods, um, this one being galaxy clustering, this one being galaxy galaxy lensing. And if you think that um, your dark matter model has a certain bias dependence as a function of galaxy sample, as a function of, of scale or redshift, you can just um, replace the galaxy sample that we chose and look at the um, galaxy bias evolution as a function of redshift there. Um, the next thing I wanted to, to show is actually comparison of the dark matter map or mostly dark matter map. It is the actual matter map um, compared to the galaxy density map. Again, from the red magic sample here, but you can pick a different sample. And if you can create uh, these two maps and have a good idea how to um, compare them, then that's interesting for us and for you, hopefully. Um, the other uh, important aspect, I already mentioned that we let neutrinos roam as a free parameter. So one of the important things that we found is that the DES clustering amplitude is slightly lower from what you would expect um, given the Planck best fit cosmology and assuming lambda CDM. So there's a couple of, of ways how to um, bridge this discrepancy. One is you can decrease um, S8 um, compared to what we found, you can uh, compare to Planck, you can decrease omega matter, you can increase the sum of the neutrino masses, or you can perhaps assume a different dark matter species with different properties. So if you have such a, um, um, if you have such a forward modeling framework for your dark matter model, um, then we would be happy to include that, or if you have an analytic description of that, we would also be happy to implement that. And if there is uh, consequences not for the power spectrum, but for bispectra and trispectra, that is also something we're looking into in the near future. Um, something very, very different, but you have probably heard of that, is that the Dark Energy Survey does not only do cosmology, but we also detected a couple of new dwarf galaxies, quite interestingly, in this footprint. So this is our main footprint. You can see um, 
the red uh, triangles, those are candidates in the year two data and the red circles here, those are um, um, candidates in the year one data. I think they have been confirmed by now. Um, so interestingly, those are ideal laboratories for dark matter annihilation studies. But you can also try to um, develop Milky Way-like halo models, in, for example, in, in the paper by Shunsaku Horiyuchi. So given that we already have year three data sitting on disk, I expect that we will find a couple of more. And uh, year five data, um, as we increase in depth, we will find uh, also the very uh, faint uh, dwarf galaxies or even fainter ones um, compared to the ones we've found already. So in summary, um, the year three analysis is going on right now. We will have a factor of four increase in area and 1.2 in depth. So this is going to be exciting for cosmology. We will also have an even stronger increase in the constraining power from using our new methodology to combine other probes than we have already. So especially including clusters properly in the analysis, but also including supernova and CMB lensing. And it would be very interesting, or I would be very interested in talking to, to this community uh, how to test predictions of your favorite dark matter model with this specific data set. Thank you. <laughs>